today I'm going to show you how to use FTP over FileZilla and I'm also going to show you how to install a plugin and change your server type to a bucket slash spigot server but once you change your server type to a bucket slash spigot server you pretty much know how to change it to anything you want. So let's go through that now. So the first thing you want to do as shown in the Multicraft Basics video is you're going to want to log into your Multicraft control panel as that's where all the magic happens. Your Multicraft control panel looks something like this right here and the first thing you want to do to access your, uh, access your server files is you, ac you need to know that you access them over something called FTP and all you need to do for that is nip down to files and press on FTP file access. Now I've already got this open in this tab here and it shows you all the details that you, you're going to need to connect to your, um, your server via FTP. So the next thing you're going to need to do this is either, you can either use the web based client which is this here and once you put your password in you'll be redirected to a web based FTP client but note that there are some limitations to this and it is still in development so it is a bit buggy uh, sometimes you can press login on here and it, it, it'll log you in and then log you straight back out again uh, and there is an upload limit slash download limit of 512 megabyte if you want to upload more than that at once you're going to need to use what we recommend which is this lovely tool right here called FileZilla. All you need to do is give it a quick Google search and it will be the first result you see or you can go to FileZilla-project.org. Uh, the link will be in the description for that. And all you're going to need to do is download FileZilla Client. It's available for, I believe it's available for, well it, it is available for Windows um, and it will be most likely available for Linux as well but we can check that. Yes it's available for Linux, it's available for uh, OS X, so Apple devices and it's available for Windows 32 bit and Windows 64 bit which is really great. So uh, all we need to do now and there are additional download options as well for whatever OS you're on if you're on Linux uh, you can even get the source code if you want to if you're a very advanced user but most people won't need that just hit the download page and it will give you the appropriate um, download for you here uh, on the front page so right so all you need to do is download that install that and what you're going to need is on the home page make sure you click FileZilla client if you click FileZilla server you are downloading the wrong thing uh, FileZilla server is if your PC is acting like the server when in fact your server is obviously hosted with us and you just need to access it so make sure you're downloading FileZilla client and make sure that you're downloading the right one for your platform, install it, it's a really simple installation and then you'll be fine that you're left with a screen that looks a little bit like this. Obviously I've already put my password in and I've already put the port number in. The port number is always 21 no matter what server you've got hosted with us, no matter where it is, it's always port 21. You can even leave this blank if you want to, it is always 21. So the next thing you're going to need to do is go to your host. So your host uh, is the address that's up here. Now this is not the same as your hosting server address. So it's not the same address that you type into your Minecraft client, it's a completely different one. Once you type this in here you might find that it leaves you with a strange space. Just delete that space and you'll be fine and then you need to copy your username as well. This is not the same as your Multicraft username, it is different again with these numbers on the end and it will be different for each server you have. Your username for FTP does not stay the same throughout so you will need to make sure that that is updated and you will need to make sure that you're using your Multicraft password here. If it doesn't work you can reset your Multicraft password. All you need to do is go to help.ggservers.com and I'll actually show you how to do that right now because it's it's dead simple. If you go to help.ggservers.com, which is right here, all you need to do is search for reset and then it's right there, reset your Multicraft password and it will show you how to do that in simple steps. So the next thing you're going to need to do is log in to your client. So click quick connect once you've typed your details in. Sometimes something like this might pop up and that's basically just asking you to check that you're connecting to the right server. And all you need to do is click always trust and press OK. And the next thing you know, boom, 
there you go. So the next thing you know, you've got your server files on this side, the right hand side, and you've got your uh, PC, local PC files, so what's on your computer on this side. So the next thing you're going to need to do is, well, what I'm going to show you how to do now is change your server version. So at the minute, this is on vanilla Minecraft 1.14.3, which does not support plugins. And let's say you wanted to install a plugin. So to install a plugin, you'd need to have a bucket, which is this thing here, or you'd need to have a Spigot server, which is which are these guys right here. You need either a Spigot or a Bucket server to install plugins. You cannot get plugins on vanilla Minecraft, but Bucket and Spigot are very, very similar to vanilla Minecraft. In fact, you can even connect via the same client, so you don't need a special client or anything. You can use a default Minecraft client to connect to a Bucket or Spigot server, so long as they're on the same version, and you shall be ripe as rain. So, all you need to do is once you've logged into FTP, we're going to need to change a server version first. So let's head back to our Multicraft control panel, hit files, and then hit setup. I'm going to open that in a new tab so you can see exactly what's going on. And I'm also going to open up the console as well so I can show you, so you can see it's actually working, which is the fun bit actually. So as you can see, the server's currently online. We don't need to stop it or anything for this because we do that ourselves. So all we need to do is scroll down and find either Bucket or Spigot. See, there's Spigot right there, but I personally am a fan of Bucket. So there it is. It's under Craft Bucket, but it's the same thing. When we're switching to Craft Bucket from vanilla, we usually don't need to delete server files. But in this case, we are going to delete them. So all we need to do now is paste our password. I think it's... No, it's not that one. It's that one. All we need to do is click apply on that. And what that's going to do is that's going to set... Okay. Let's try... No, not that one. Yeah, let's try that one and see if that works. It's one of the three. <laughs> no, okay, let's try again. Does that work? No, okay. Let me pause the video a sec. So we just typed our password in to delete all the server files and as you can see there, it is currently saying that uh, the following template will be set up on the next server startup. Now whatever you do, don't forget that this is here. If you want to cancel it, do so now because once you close this page off and you forget it, then next time you restart, all of your server files will be deleted. So. The next thing you need to do is head back to your console and you'll notice you'll notice that well the setup hasn't been done yet your server is still running 1.14 vanilla and not craft bucket and that's because you need to restart it because it does say here that the following template will be set up on the next server startup so what you need to do is restart your server and you'll see here that if it works what will pop up is setup complete or something along those lines and i'm going to show you what that looks like now in the console like I said, your console is the main bit of your server, and as you can see there, it says setup done, restarting. That means we're now on craft bucket. As you can see, this build is outdated, but of course you can use a custom jar, and there are help guides to this on help.ggservers.com. All you need to do is type in the word custom, and there it is straight away. How to upload and use a custom jar file. And of course, you can get these custom jar files from getbucket.org. These guys provide uh, jar files for Bucket, Spigot, and even Vanilla, if you go to the top here. And their Vanilla versions go as far back as 1.2.5, so you really can play any version you like. And that's the guide there on how to use a custom jar file. We'll also have a video uh, link to that uh, as well. So. As you can see, our server is restarting, and as you can see, it is taking a little bit longer because we've got to generate all of our dimensions and the world that we're going to be in as well. And there you go, it, it's done now, it only took 30 seconds, it doesn't take that long. So, all you need to do now is if we refresh this page, it should now go away and say that there's no setup to be done. 
There you go, it's asking us to do a completely new setup, but we don't want to do that because we're already on the version that we want to be on. So, as you can see up here, we are on we are on uh, 1.14.4 uh, craft bucket. So that means 1.14.4 plugins will work with our version uh, of bucket. So you can grab bucket plugins from dev.bucket.org. Again, there's going to be a link in the description to that. And what you can do is you can hit projects. And there's going to be loads and loads of plugins and projects that you can have. Uh, Essentials X is quite a good one. I do believe that's updated for 1.14 as well. Uh, has it been? Let's just check. Yep, there you go, 1.14. Uh, and that's the most recent release version here. And all you need to do when you're installing a plugin is you'll see that if I refresh this now, you're going to need to refresh your uh, FTP if you've done this like I have and done a setup while you're connected to FTP. Just right click anywhere that's blank on here and press refresh. And you can see now that Bucket has automatically generated us a plugins folder, which should be empty because we don't have any plugins. But we can fix that dead easily. All we need to do is download uh, Essentials X. And once it's downloaded, it's going to warn us that it could harm our computer. But that's just because it's a jar file and Chrome finds jar files hard to scan. So it might, these downloads might take a little bit longer. So all you need to do is drag Essentials X and you can literally, if you're using Chrome, you can literally drag it from the downloads bar into FileZilla into your plugins folder. And what it'll do is it'll upload it from your downloads folder and there it is. All you need to do now is once you've dragged that in there, all you need to do is go to your server console and restart your server. Once we press restart, what should happen is we should see Essentials X in the console and it should say that it's been enabled successfully for us. Again, it's going to say this build is outdated, but that's just the big up build itself. But in terms of the actual game, it should still work. That's why I'm not that worried about this, except it does add quite an annoying 20 second countdown on there, but nothing to fear there. So once this starts, there it is, loading libraries. As you can see, we're starting the server. As you can see, Essentials there is reporting that it's loading up. As you can see, Essentials is warning us that it's um, it's missing folders, and that's just because we haven't started it up before. And as you can see, we got there's a difference between warn and error. Error usually means something went wrong that needs looking into, and warnings are just there to tell you that something's missing or something needs repairing. And most of the time, plugins will auto-generate uh, the folders and files that they need. And as you can see in our plugins folder now, if we refresh it again, we should see what that an essentials folder. And what's this? What this is called is called a subfolder. And in here are all the configuration files for the essentials plugin. And how we edit these is we have to drag and drop them to our own computer. Uh, you don't have to drag and drop it into this left bit here. You can drag and drop and hold uh, in the bottom right corner here and drag it straight to your desktop where you can um, edit the file. Uh, I personally recommend editing config files with Notepad++, which is also another free bit of software that you can download and you can use it to uh, edit config files um, really easily and um, it's better than the normal notepad that comes with Windows itself. Uh, it really is quite easy to use. As you can see, it's made for uh, JavaScript which is, and uh, YML files and such, which is what, um, which is what uh, Minecraft servers use for their uh, 
plugins, YML files and uh, JSON files. JSON files can be opened in the same way with Notepad++. They are just a little bit different but uh, again that's self-explanatory once you've opened the file. They, are, they aren't that hard to be honest. Um, and that's it. So once you've done all that, you should be uh, good to go. So you've changed your server file, you've changed your server version, you've installed a plugin, and there you go. You can now configure that plugin to how you like with the config files. So let, once again, they're in plugins, and then it will generate. Don't forget to refresh. And then in here are all of your different um, config files that you can edit and set up the plugin to your liking. Usually, every plugin will generate a config folder, um, so you can experiment and make it work how you want to. Again, if you need any help, we are here 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Just press the chat bubble and we'll be able to help you. Uh, today, it seems typically in under 12 minutes, so I don't think that's too bad. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's the end of this video. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I will see you later.